I don't think it's asking too much to get every kid to high levels of achievement, no. I, I think that, in fact, it's pretty necessary. It's a fantastic national goal to say, um, let's get all kids to a, to a, a level playing field. Um, but I think that it's easy to underestimate how hard that's going to be. There's at least the beginning of a framework in place, or at least data to create a framework, where um, being a successful teacher and being a successful principal and being a successful superintendent has to do with raising the abilities and the success level of kids in your school. And right now, anyway, that's mostly measured on standardized tests, um, which I think for a lot of kids is, is you know, it's, it's essential. It's a really important way to measure things. I think there are people who are critics of those tests, and I think they have a point, too, that there are lots of things that those tests don't measure. But I think the important thing that they measure is, can a kid read and write and do math? And I think that um, that proficiency in those skills is absolutely essential, so that if kids are not doing well on those skills as measured on those tests, they're not doing well. I think there's some things in the schools that I looked at that seem to tie them together. One thing is spending a lot more time in class, literally giving kids more instruction than other places. Um, another is the leadership model, the way that principals um, are guided from above but really have a lot of autonomy, a lot of control over their teachers and over their curriculum. Um, I think another one is about culture, is about school culture, is being able to control, um, ha sort of take ownership of the way that the school functions, the way that kids interact with each other and with the school. Um, I think when that can happen in a school, it makes a big difference. And then the fourth one I'd say is about teachers, is really the, the schools that I saw that were most successful just thought about how to train teachers, how to support teachers, how to select teachers in a way that uh, they just took it much more seriously and spent a lot more time on it than other schools did. I think part of the model is expanding KIPP-like schools, but I think it even goes more, I think it's even more complicated than that because I think that I think the KIPP schools work for some kids, but I think that they don't necessarily work for all kids. And I think that a strategy that's really going to work in a single neighborhood or in a city like New Haven or in the state is going to be much more complicated than just you know having these excellent high-performing middle schools. I think it's got to start earlier. It's got to be more all-encompassing. It's got to give. It's got to work for kids whose parents are not engaged in their education, who don't really care where they go to school, um, who aren't going to help them with their homework, aren't going to sign a contract to say they'll help them with their homework. Those kids deserve success uh, just as much as the kids whose parents um, are totally gung-ho and are completely on board at a school like a Kip school. What I've learned from the Harlem Children's Zone is that schools are a big deal. Schools can make a huge difference, um, and that's certainly something I've learned from Amistad and Kip schools as well but that schools are not enough. That, um, that from, for, uh, uh, to get to scale, to really work with huge numbers of poor kids in, in bad neighborhoods, um, there needs to be support before they get to school, there needs to be programs for their parents, there need to, needs to be pre-kindergartens, there needs to be after-school programs, there really just needs to be an entire support system that kind of emulates the sort of support system that middle class kids get in good neighborhoods in New Haven or other places in the state. Um, that those kids have advantages and supports from their families that, that are sort of invisible. Their families don't think they're giving them those supports. Those are things that you know are happening around the dinner table and at piano lessons and at soccer games and at you know summer camp and internships. Um, there's just this whole web of support that middle class kids and upper middle class kids get throughout their entire lives. And that is why they're successful. They're successful because of that support.